hey guys this is tech howdy i welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this cms application using asp.net core 3 and angular 10 in the last video tutorial we finished most part of implementation of the profile view so the only thing that's remaining in the profile view right now is to set the site-wide settings since we need to load these site-wide setting information like the website author name the website name in our application we would need to create this uh, site settings view in our local application so that we can then set these values now how these values are being set these values do not come from the database they are set in the app settings file so if i go to the application and then i go to the app settings file the app setting file is located in the main project and here we will be uh, adding these values like the website name the website keyword description footer text and so on over here in this app settings file so every time the admin does any change to the app settings or the site wide setting for example i change the name of my website and update this particular uh, website uh, name then there is no changes made to the database but the changes will take place in the app settings file so basically we are writing these new values to this uh, file that is the json file that we have over here now how do we write data onto a json file that's what we are going to learn in this video tutorial we will be creating a service that will perform this writing for us so let's go ahead and start implementing the site-wide settings so now our primary goal here is to create the writing service which will be responsible to make changes to the app settings file so any values that i would want to change not just the site-wide settings any values that i would want to change in this file i can use this service for changing those values so let's go ahead and create this writing service in our application so we will go ahead and right click on our main project go ahead and add a new project here we will choose the web and console option choose the class library and make sure that this is a .NET Core class library then we will name this as writable option service you can name this anything that you like then I will make sure that I am creating this project not inside my main project but inside the folder which contains all my projects I'll open this and then create it so now a writable option service project is created so we don't need the default class I'm going to get rid of it I'm going to delete it now inside the writable service we would going to we were going we are going to add some new get packages so right click and add new get packages we would require three packages one of them is newton soft.json i'm going to add this and i'm going to add the latest stable version now as you see that the package is being added here on the top bar once the package is added now we will add our second package so the second package that we would need so let's add this package it's called microsoft extensions dot hosting dot abstraction so select this package latest stable version add this package also guys as i have mentioned this in many of the previous video tutorials let me just accept it that whenever you install packages in your class library make sure that the package versions that you are installing and if the packages are also used in other class libraries you have installed them make sure that they are the same version you do not install 3.1.6 over here and then you install 3.1.5 in other projects this will cause problems therefore always make sure you're using the same version of these packages in any of your projects that you have so now the final package that you would need to install is microsoft.extension.options so let's go ahead and install it so i'm going to right click manage new get packages 
search for Microsoft extension dot options install the latest stable version and hit add package now the package is being installed and we'll accept the terms so the packages are now installed let's go ahead and create the standard structure that we follow in all our projects which is the interface and the class itself so let's go ahead and create it in the writable option service so i have created the interface and the class and i have implemented this interface on the writable service class now here i want to use this writable service to modify the data in the app settings file for multiple sections so i can use it for app settings i can use it for identity default options i can use it for app user options and so on so any options or sections that i have over here in this file i should be able to use this writable service to modify data in any of these sections that we have and for every section that we have over here we can create a class in our model service for example for the app settings we are mapping over all these property data to our app settings class similarly we have this identity default options where we map over the data to the identity default option class that we have created therefore in the writable service that we have over here we don't have a fixed model we can pass any model that we want inside this class so that we can edit the section therefore to do that we would specify a generic type over here instead of a hard model that we are going to use in this particular service also we need to define what is this generic model going to be therefore we can specify that this generic type t is a class now we are getting this error because in the interface we have to also specify the generic type that we are going to output so here we will need to specify the generic type as well so now we should not see any error now we will go ahead and do the following dependency injection that for the classes that we need in this writable service so that we can use it to write our logic inside this class so here we would need a instance of the web hosting environment so that we can get access to the app setting files because this file will be hosted on the web server then we would also need the instance of i options monitor to make changes to the file so first we will go ahead and reference the i options monitor class using the microsoft extension options the next thing over here for the i web host environment which is a part of the dependency that we have added the hosting abstractions but since this is a class library we cannot use this class inside a class library therefore to fix this issue what we can do is we can go to the uh, cs proj file of this particular project and to do that i'm going to right click on the main project and display show all files option scroll down and here i see the cs proj file i'll click on it and here inside the cs proj file i will go ahead and add the following reference here you can see i have added the item group uh, tag which specifies that the framework reference is microsoft asp netcode that should be included now if i go back to the writable uh, service class i should be able to use asp netcode hosting as the reference so this should now fix the error for iweb host environment now the next thing that we want to do is instantiate these objects inside this constructor using dependency injection so i have instantiated these objects in the constructor and assigned them the value that i received from the injected objects to these read only objects 
Now we would also need an instance of the logging service to log any errors in our log file. Therefore, first thing I'll do here is go ahead and now I don't need to display all files. So I will hide all my hidden files that are being displayed, then go to the project writable option service and add the reference to the logging service project so that we can make use of the serilog logger to log any errors that we find in this process of writing files or writing the data onto the JSON file. So now we will go ahead and create the method that we need to update the JSON file when new changes are added to the file. So before we go ahead and write the update method, there's one more thing that we would need to do on our interface. So let's go to the iWritable service interface or or this file and here in the interface we would need to extend this interface from I op options snapshot and the reason to do that we can first open the Microsoft documentation to understand why we need to do it so if we want to make any changes to the JSON configuration file after the app has started so while the admin is making changes from the admin panel that means that the application has already started so these changes will not be read or not be updated unless the app has started again therefore in order to read these changes while the application is running we would need to use iOption snapshot interface in the uh, class so that we can make the changes and they are available immediately otherwise the admin will have to restart the application so you could read this uh, documentation further and understand uh, the i option snapshot but the high level understanding is that if you want to make any changes to the configuration file while the application is running and then fetch those changes without the application being started again then you would have to use the i option snapshot in your uh, class so let's go back to our class and start implementing the update file method so that we can update the json file so here i have implemented the update method where we will require two properties one to get the value and one to set the value so it's like the getter and setter that we are going to use and while we get the value we will specify the name of the key for which we need the value from the JSON section then in the update method we are going to pass the action which will contain all the changes that we need to perform on the JSON file here we will use the environment object to get the root file provider we will access the file and then using the JSON convert class from Newton soft we will deserialize the object and then finally we will apply the changes to the object section then we will write all these changes and if uh, there is no error we will set this result error to false and if there is any error we will return the result error by setting it to through if we catch any exception so that's all for the changes that we are going to perform in the JSON file so there is nothing much here we deserialize and we then uh, serialize the JSON object that we are going to uh, use in the sections of the app settings file now since we have created the update object update method we would need to add this update method to the interface so that we can access it so i'm going to go here and add it over here so now we can use this update method to update our json section or section in the json file in any of the classes in our application after referencing the writable option service so now let's go back to the profile controller and here let's set this option that we need to update this property that we have admin base view model dot site wide setting which itself is an object which contains the properties for our site wide setting so here in the profile controller we are going to inject the writable service that we just created and to inject the writable service we are going to use the interface 
and while using the interface we need to specify the object type that we want to write or the section type in our class that we are going to use it so we're going to inject the site-wide setting class over here we need to provide reference to the iWritable service therefore we are going to add this in the uh, web references so I'm going to go here reference and the project reference I'm going to add the writable option service so once the project is restored then I should be able to add the import statement to the profile controller class for using the writable service so now the project is restored now I can add the using statement and now I can instantiate this uh, service in the constructor using dependency injection so I have instantiated this uh, service in the constructor using dependency injection and then now I would need to go to the uh, set admin base view model method and then in this method instead of setting the value to null for this site-wide setting I will use the writable setting object that I just instantiated and set the value using the dot value property to this uh, site-wide setting object now all the property values will be mapped over to this site-wide setting now this might not work because we are to we have to inject this to the middleware since we are injecting it as a dependency we need to make sure it's available in the startup class so let's go to our startup class and add this dependency so in the startup class we would need to add the service for the i writable service that we have created but if we go over here we need to we also need an instance of the i web host environment and we also need the uh, option in the uh, in our service that we need we also need the file name that we need to make changes to so we would have to add all these when we create or inject this service inside the startup class so I don't want to write the code over here therefore what I will do is I will go ahead in the project I will create a new folder and this new folder I will call it as extensions and inside this extensions folder I'm going to create a class which will have all the service collections that I need to set like map over all the values for map settings I can use this extension class for that purpose so I would go ahead and call this class as service collection extension you can name this anything that you like so I'm going to call it service collection extension because it's a collection of all these services that I would need from the app settings to map over to the uh, writable service also I can add additional uh, services that I need to map over so to prevent from code cluttering on the startup class so here what I can do is I'm going to create a static method we don't need any constructor we can create a static method and this will be a static class since we don't need to create a new object or instantiate this class we will just use a static class so this can be directly accessed and the method inside this class also will be static so here I have created a static method I've called this method as configure writable because I'm configuring the writable service here for configuring the writable service I need access to the services uh, interface and the section interface so that I can get the section and configure it if you go to the startup class we when we also configured the uh, identity default option section we would need these uh, configure uh, service method and we would also need access to the section so get section method so that's what exactly we are doing over here in the service collection class we need access to these classes and through the interface we are accessing them so now let's add the missing reference 
and we will also pass the file name that needs to be edited as the parameter so here we will add the missing reference to writable service options we will add the writable service as transient so for every request there will be one instance created and then we will add the missing reference to web host environment here we would not need to add any or make any changes to the cs proj file because the cms core ng project itself is an is not a class library it already has when we created this project it already has the uh, item group for that specific ASP.NET core app but here when we created the class library in writable options we had to manually add it because we needed access to the web hosting environment interface we will add this missing extension options for Microsoft extension options and now that should be it so now we have created an extension method that we can use in the startup class we will get the required service for options monitor and then return this writable service to whatever class that is requesting in this service so this service is being requested by profile controller so it will be returned over here as a dependency but it will not be returned unless we add it to the startup class because we have just created an extension method we need to call that extension method from the uh, startup class so we will do it over here just below the functional service i will call the configure writable method that we just created since it's a static method i am just calling it using the service dot configure configure writable options i don't have to instantiate it and i'm getting the site wide uh, setting section using this get section method and i'm passing it over here to the parameter also i am passing the file name Keep in mind that you don't need to provide the service uh, interface instance that's because we are already passing it using the this statement over here this keyword or statement so it will automatically get it when the class is or method is called and be injected so that should be it so now we have these options over here now let's go to the app settings file and create the site wide setting section because it will the writable service will try to get this section from this file and if there is no section then we will get an error so let's create this section over here now to create the site wide setting section and map over all the properties of the site wide setting model that we have created over here we need to make sure that our section in the app setting file has all these keys present so let's create it so here just below the data protection key section i will create another section call it site wide settings and also keep in mind that the name of the section should match the name of the class don't name your class different and your section different so it should be same so and the property names as well it should match the property names in the class so the data will be mapped over otherwise it won't map any of the values if the property names are different so we have created this now let's save this app settings file go back to the profile controller here we have added the value and we have also injected the writable service so in the startup class we should not have any issues while injecting this services now let's go ahead and rebuild this application to make sure that we don't have any errors So the build was successful we don't have errors just have some warnings but we don't have any errors so let's go ahead and go to the index dots or sorry to the content dot layout file and make sure we have uncommented this code over here and one final thing that we would want to do is check that we have added the reference to startup I we did it yes i'm sorry we did it already so let's go ahead and run this application so the application is loaded let's go to the admin panel and let's log in and check 
if we still get the error while we access the profile view. So we are not getting the error while we access the profile view because now the uh, site-wide settings uh, section is being injected with the values and we don't need to comment that code. The only thing that is left is to create this site-wide setting view in our application because this view is missing so that we can update the values in the app settings file. So let's quickly go ahead and create it and we will then refresh this page to see if uh, we still get the error. So let's go back to our application and create this site-wide setting. So in the controller of the admin section, we have already created the uh, controller for site-wide settings. So here we already have the view created for the site settings. Let's go to the site settings folder in the views folder, right click on it and add a new file. We are going to use a custom layout for this view. So we are going to add a view import file over here and add the reference to the new uh, imported view that we are going to import. So the custom layout view that we are going to set for the site settings, we will call it underscore admin site settings layout. And we are using a custom view because we don't want to show the dashboard cards on this view. Therefore, we are using a custom layout. So to add this custom layout and share it, we will add it in the shared folder. Just right click, add a new file. Let's look for the layout file and change the name to the name that we are going to use. Here we will get rid of these default code and write our custom code. Here the view is uh, this almost the same but only thing that's missing here is the dashboard, the card icons that you see. I have not added that because we don't need to show that on this view. So I have created a separate view for site settings and it can be edited accordingly if we have to add or change. So it's always good to have a separate layout when you are not sure how you are going to add or when you are going to add any components. So let's close this, go to the views folder and inside the views folder we would need to create this index view. So let's go ahead and create this index view. So let's right click, add a new file, create a eraser view, call this index and then hit new. Let's delete this default code. And here we will start the code, we will start adding the code that we need. So I've added the code that's needed to load the view. I have injected the admin base view model because it contains the site settings class and all the properties that we would need to show on the elements that we are going to display. Using razor syntax, we are going to display these elements. And then in the section for scripts, we are going to inject the sweet alert pop-up to show notification. And here when the document is ready, we are going to listen for any click events when the uh, button on the uh, site view settings, which is the update button is being uh, clicked. We will prevent any default uh, function, which is to submit the form so that the page doesn't reload. And then we, we will be using the update site wide settings method to call the backend method in the action controller that we have to implement the logic. Now there's one thing that we need to note over here we want to update the file asynchronously using ajax which means that we don't want the file to uh, page to reload but our endpoint is not an api therefore as soon as we call the uh, action method so if we go to the site wide settings controller and we call the action method so if we go to the site settings controller and if we try to call any action method it's going to return a view it's not going to return a OK or any JSON response, which means the page will be reloaded. Therefore, how do we prevent the reloading of this page when we call these action methods? Because our action methods are not API endpoints. So how do we fix that? We don't want the page to reload. So to do that, we are going to use the create a custom attribute that will check if the request coming in is an Ajax request 
and if it's an ajax request then we will prevent the page reload so let's go ahead and quickly create this ajax attribute so here in the project i'm going to create another project and inside this project we will create all the attributes that we would need in our application so let's create a new project we will choose the class library which is .NET Core class library click next we will call this project as attribute service we will browse and make sure that we are creating the project inside the folder which contains all our projects not the main project folder so click open create now the attribute service is created we don't need this default class therefore we will go ahead and delete this default class so we don't need this now in this class we would need to create a new class in the service we will create a new class we will call this as ajax only attribute and we will create this class here we don't need the constructor since we are going to use this as an attribute over our action method we would need to uh, implement this ajax only attribute class uh, from the action method selector attribute because we are going to place this attribute over the action method that we are going to create here so we will place it like this over the action method we will call it a call the name of the class but to do that in the ajax only attributes uh, class we would need to install a package that contains the action method selector attribute class and let's go ahead and add this new get package so we would need asp net core dot mvc dot core so that's the package microsoft aspnet core dot mvc dot core we will add the latest stable version to this project Let's accept and install the package and the classes so the package is now successfully added let's extend it from the action method selector attribute and add the missing reference to microsoft aspnet core dot mvc dot action constraints also we would need to implement the missing methods for this uh, class that we have extended so uh, this is the method that we are going to use to validate if the request coming in from for that particular action method is an ajax request or it's a non ajax request so to do that in the body of this method where we are going to validate the request we just need this two lines of code using the route context that we are injecting over here we can get the request headers and in the request headers with the key x requested with if the value of this key is xml http request then that means that it's an ajax call so every time when you make an ajax request to the backend method the headers will be added and the headers uh, will contain a key called as x requested with and the value for that key will be xml http request now if this particular key exists in the header then we know it's an ajax call so we will identify it and we will act accordingly in the method that we are creating so let's go back to the site settings controller and to use this attribute over here first thing we need to do is add the reference to the project so let's add it over here to the project which is the attribute service click ok once the reference has been added we'll go ahead and write the logic over here our site site settings controller can only be accessed by the admin so we will set the authentication attribute over here for the authentication scheme admin so we have done this for the home controller as well if you are watching this video and have not watched the previous video tutorial where we have implemented the authentication for admin using custom authentication handler please go ahead and watch it before you watch this video tutorial if you want to understand how we use these authentication scheme 
so once we add this uh, attribute over here only admin can access this uh, class and all the methods inside this class so now we will go ahead and instantiate the required objects that we need using dependency injection so that we can use it in this controller class so here we have instantiated the required objects we would require the user service object to get the user information cookie service object to get the cookie user id cookie from the browser we need the service provider to access the services data protection key instance to decrypt the user id cookie and get the actual value app setting section instance to get the value of the app setting section the site wide setting for the site wide setting section and the admin base view model which we are going to inject in the view so now we have all these uh, values over here that have been instantiated using dependency injection now let's go ahead and create the index view that we would be using so the index view here i have changed it to the asynchronous form and we have returning a task of type i action result we would need the reference to i data protection so that we can get the data protection service instance to decrypt our key once we have decrypted the key using the application user key we will decrypt the user id get the value and fetch the user details from the user service using the get user profile by id method that we have created then once we have the user we will update the user profile we will map over the admin base view model properties values and then we will return the admin base view model back to the index view so we this returned object will be then injected in our index now the next thing that we need to do is create the update method which is when the update button is clicked the app setting files will get updated with all the changes that were made on the update form by the admin user so let's go ahead and implement that method now as i mentioned earlier that this method needs to be an ajax method which means that when this method is called the page should not be refreshed therefore we are going to use this attribute that we created so that we can identify if the method is an ajax method so here i have created the update settings method where we will be inserting the site-wide setting object from the form in the body of the ajax method and that's therefore we have used the from body attribute over here now since we want to identify if this method is an ajax method then only we will uh, refresh uh, the, or update the settings so we will use the ajax only attribute that we just created and reference the attribute service project we don't need to inject it over here because we are just using the method to verify if the user is a uh, if the client is making an ajax call sorry now uh, i just put a delay over here because i'm using an asynchronous method so i don't get any errors for the await keyword and then we will update the values on our file on our app settings.json file by calling this writable setting wide uh, object that we created in the constructor and then we have the update method this is the update method that will do the serialization and deserialization of the object for us and will update the json file so if we go to the implementation here is the method that we are calling which does the deserialization and serialization of the object and then writes the values back to the file so if we go back to the site settings controller we can now save this and uh, this method is now complete our site settings uh, file is uh, complete the method is complete we have implemented the logic over here we have also added the index.cshtml file for this view so in the site settings view here we have the view created we have in injected the admin base view model so now we should not get any errors when we try to load the view in the admin panel so let's build our application 
before we run this application we will build and then we will test our application so the build is successful let's go ahead and run our application to make sure that the view loads so the application is loaded let's go back to the option over here i guess our cookie is not valid but i can check okay so the cookie is still valid so I, when i refreshed i could still access the backend and here you can see that we now can access the site settings it's loading we don't see any errors over here other than the sweet alert file which is not loading we will fix this but let's first go ahead and see if we can update the values in our app settings file so if i change this to tech howdy and i will do something like one two three four and we will check the app settings file so our app settings file is located here now we are trying to update these values so we will see if the code implementation works so going back to the browser let's hit update so it looks like we have got a success res response here so let's check the option on this app settings file on the app settings file yes you can see the values have been updated the website author name also is changed and i see this one two three four if i go back to the browser i've implemented a model which will load and uh, to see the changes it will basically tell the user go ahead and reload the page in order to see the changes so we will have to reload the page so i will reload the page i should see the changes over here now the error that is for the sweet alert since library sweet alert u2 it cannot find this file so let me go back over here to the index page library sweet alert 2 scroll library Okay, so the name of the package is Lemonte Dash Sweet Alert 2. And then this, if I save this and reload, I should see the error disappear. Yes, because now the file is loaded. Let me just reduce the size of this browser like this and go to the app settings file so here let's check to see if the value here changes so i'm going to just check how the website update reload okay so i will change the values if i click here yeah the values get updated on the document itself so you can further uh, validate this code that we just did i'm not going to spend time on validating the step by step implementation of the writable service or any other code that we did but you can do it uh, and all you have to do is set a breakpoint over here and then you can uh, go step by step and understand each uh, execution part of the code so if i go back here and i try to click update so the method Apply, update method is called and I have all the changes in the changes object and then you can go ahead and uh, debug each line of the code so that's how we uh, edit the app settings file in our project and that's how we reload these changes on the 
uh, admin view so we have completed the site settings view we have completed the profile view we would need to implement the other view which is the email settings and the email service which will be which we will be working soon because after to check the update profile when we update the profile we would also need to send an email to the user and therefore i'm not testing it right now to so we will test that when we implement the email service because we will need that for uh, sending emails to users when they change their password or update any information on their profile since we have not yet implemented the email service i'm not spending time on making a video to test the profile update we will do that once we have all these services up and running so for now this should be it all the code will be available in the devops repo if you have any questions use the comment section and do not forget to like and subscribe this channel please thank you